Joining me right now is Douglas County's Director of Elections, Milton Kidd. And uh, I understand, Mr. Kidd, you and your team have been feverishly working, working behind the scenes, gearing up for this upcoming election on June 9th. And as a result of COVID-19, man, I understand you've been working round the clock. Is that true? Yes, sir. Uh, with, uh, with this that is going on right now, I must give credit to the team that is behind me because uh, in this time of a pandemic, I couldn't do any of the things that I do without a dedicated team of individuals that I know are critical to everything that it means to be an American and are helping uh, continue this electoral process even in the time of a pandemic. Wow, wow. Tell me a little bit what's gearing gearing up, because I understand the Secretary of State has already uh, distributed absentee ballot applications. And there are a lot of questions I know citizens and various people have when it comes to absentee ballot voting. And because of social distancing practices and other healthy and safety practices underway because of COVID-19 and the coronavirus, um, there are a lot of questions, but I'm glad you're here with me so we can help answer some of those questions for citizens, such as, one, I know um, a, a citizen had asked my office, how do I vote by absentee ballot? Okay, uh, since we're on the subject of absentee ballot, I'll uh, discuss the first thing. The state uh, did make the decision when they changed uh, the presidential preference primary and they postponed it to be combined with the now June 9th general primary, they went ahead and issued an absentee ballot application to all registered voters of of the state of Georgia in an active status. Those applications have already gone out and uh, have been or being received by elections offices across uh, the state. Part of uh, the absentee balloting uh, process for the state of Georgia has always been the fact that you do not need a reason to request an absentee ballot. You just need to submit an absentee ballot application. Now, uh, the state did mail out uh, applications to individuals, but uh, just like with anything, this is the U.S. mail. So sometimes individuals have not gotten those applications as well. So if an individual wants an absentee ballot, they can always go to our website and find the application on our website at CelebrateDouglasCounty.com. That application, uh, I have a copy of the one that were mailed to voters. It looks like this. The absentee ballot application needs to contain the voter's name, their address that they're registered at, and it has to contain a physical signature. A digital signature will not work here. What if I voted in the March presidential primary already? Will I receive this ballot again along with the June 9th primary ballot? Individuals that participated in the two-week advanced voting uh, process during the March 24th presidential primary will not receive those questions. But because that election was postponed and moved, individuals that did not get the chance to vote in that election will receive those questions as part of a combined ballot for this June 9th primary. So yes, if you voted in March, you still need to vote again. So submit that application to us so we can mail you the question that you're legally uh, eligible to vote for for the June 9th ballot. Some of those races that people are uh, concerned about include their U.S. Senator, the U.S. House Representatives, their local offices, including the Sheriff, County Commission, County Chair, Coroner, and a myriad of other races and questions that affect the citizens of Douglas County. Now, you touched on it a little bit, and I want to make sure we got it all in, in terms of are there any special instructions for filling out and submitting an absentee ballot application? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that question. One of uh, one of the main things that people need to do uh, when filling out an application is to make sure that the application actually contains all of their viable information. By that, I mean your name, your address. We need to be able to identify you as a voter. So part of that, uh, the state has allowed individuals to either 
the application that they submitted uh, by mail, or uh, they can download the application, sign it, take a picture of that application, email it to us. Now, I want to speak on those uh, email picture applications for a second since I have you on the line. This is an example of, of what I would see as an example of what not to do. This is an absentee ballot application picture that a person took and sent into our office. As you can see from the picture, the application is real small and you can't identify any of the information on there. So one of the main instructions that I would give is to make sure if you are emailing over a picture or digital copy of the application to make sure that it is clear and legible. Great, great. I'm glad I asked and thank you very much for specifically answering that question. What are other ways um, can voters submit applications to your office if they don't want to mail stamp, you know, if they have mail stamp uh, concerns? Okay. During this time, uh, if an individual, we don't control the post office. So if an individual does not want to put either their application or once they receive the ballot itself into the mail, they have a couple different options. You can physically drop off your application or your ballot itself to our office. Now, there are a couple ways of doing that. If you come inside the building, we have uh, slots uh, in front of our office that are drop boxes in front of our physical location uh, here at the courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive. We also will be installing on next week an external drop box location outside the front of the courthouse. This uh, external drop box for absentee will be clearly labeled. It will also be monitored by the sheriff's office 24 hours a day to address any concerns or issues that voters would have with dropping off an, either an absentee ballot application or the actual ballot itself. Now, this is a first, a first, yes. ne never before that we're actually providing a, uh, a box outside for people to drive up and drop off outside the courthouse. Yes, this is this is a first. This is uh, one of the other measures that the office is taking to ensure that every eligible citizen of Douglas County is able to cast a ballot and feel that it's securely turned into our office. Yes, sir. Wow, thank you, thank you. Speaking of um, some another question, you know, I want to talk about deadlines. What are the deadlines for voter registration and absentee applications? Okay, the deadline to submit any changes to your voter registration is actually May the 11th. Those changes included any changes to your name, such as if an individual got married or things like that. If you have to update your address on your voter registration, once again, that date is May the 11th, 2020. Now, as far as absentee ballot applications, the deadline to submit an absentee ballot application is June 5th for this June 9th election. But I would caution voters, to, if you are thinking about absentee ballot application, and I encourage you to seriously submit an application now for an absentee ballot and allow us to mail you that ballot now. Don't wait until June the 5th. June the 5th is the legal deadline by which we have to accept absentee ballot application. But that app, that ballot itself leaves and is mailed to the voters. It has to have time to reach the voters for a voter to fill that uh, ballot out and submit it back to our office. Once again, don't wait until June the 5th. Go ahead and fill out your application now and allow us to send you a ballot now. So I want to repeat what you're saying, the two dates. Yes. First key date, May 11th? Yes. And May 11th is, is the voter registration deadline to update your account. And June 5th deadline June is? June 5th is the last day that you can uh, request an absentee ballot. The actual uh, day of election is June 9th. Great. Mr. Kidd, is there anything else before we end that you would like to add? I would uh, add, although I am encouraging individuals to submit absentee ballot applications, we're required by law to continue in-person voting. Early voting uh, will begin here at the courthouse May 18th and continue to June the 5th. But once again, 
due to the risk of exposure of COVID-19 for yourself and those around you in the community, I would encourage you to submit an absentee ballot and vote by mail in this election. I, I don't want to leave here today without thanking the wonderful team of individuals that are around me that are making this happen. These are individuals that are essentially sacrificing the health of their family, but following all CDC guidelines to come into the office to make sure that we get every ballot out to voters. So if we are taking that time, please help us and help yourself by requesting an absentee ballot so that we all can make sure that our community comes out on the other side of this hole. Mr. Kidd, I know what you're saying and what you're talking about um, is, is real and it's uh, true and uh, it's a serious situation and the dedication of you and your staff, um, really what you're doing is essential. Uh, it's sad to 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 share, you know, news from a neighboring uh, county uh, who lost someone in their elections department who passed away from the COVID-19 virus. So again, I know what you're saying uh, is real and true, and I uh, thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Uh, speaking of the individual. Miss Beverly Walker. Miss Beverly Walker holds a special place even in my heart because she was a mentor to me. Uh, if you all and your viewers know, uh, I actually started under Fulton County Elections Office and worked closely with her. So my condolences go out to her family in this time of bereavement. Mr. Kidd, I thank you enough for your time. Thank you for sharing that. Um, thank you for uh, sharing uh, with us, you know, so much uh, that is necessary and needed to inform the public. Mr. Kidd, thank you so much again, sir. Thank you for your time and helping the citizens of Douglas County with all that you do to get the message out there. Please submit your absentee ballot applications and allow us to mail you a ballot. Thank you.